history of my teacher from the 1960s. This is a woman who taught me French and Spanish. And um, she came to my tiny British Caribbean island of St. Kitts. And by the time I got to high school, five years after she got on the island, she was already a legend on the island. So because of her, I became a linguist of sorts, um, fluent in French and Spanish, and, and uh, went to New York University, graduated, taught languages in the public schools, became a school administrator. And then after I retired, I started thinking about Madame Katzen. Madame Katzen is the subject of the biography. Didn't know very much about her. So I decided to try to find out as much as I possibly could. So I spent the next five years traveling to Hong Kong, to Shanghai, to Chile, to France, places where she studied and worked and formed a school that was very successful in Chile, that is. And after five years of collecting information, I decided I had to write this book. Oh. And so the title is From Siberia to St. Kitts, A Teacher's Journey, because she was born in Siberia. She grew up in China. She created a school in Chile. She studied in France and then came to St. Kitts at the age of 50, mm. where she made me a linguist of sorts. So it's sort of a, a tribute to this grand dam mm. who has touched the lives of students, not just in the Caribbean, but in China, in Chile, and, um, and, and uh, the world over, if you will. Oh. And so her, her students, like myself, we are all over the world. I'm living in New York now and went to New York after I graduated high school. And her students are all over the world and most of us are essentially still involved in one form or other with modern languages. So from Siberia to St. Kitts, a teacher's journey. That's what this book is about. It chronicles her impossible journey and tells about the, the number of lives, the untold number of lives she's touched in a very profound way. Where can we get copies of the book? Well, the book is now in uh, ebook format and also as a print-on-demand um, format like this on Amazon. Um, um, yes, on Amazon.com. Soon to be readers, um, well, if you if you've had a teacher, and everybody has had a teacher, if you have a teacher who has touched your life in a profound way, you would find this book interesting because it's really about a teacher who has touched a lot of lives in a very profound way. book here, Life and Down to Nobody Worth a Damn. This man suffered a great setback in his life. His wife left him, picked the two children. So he thought, he says, I might as well go ahead and cash it in, take care of business. So he decided to go back to the place where he had a lot of fun when he was a kid. It was a, kind of along the river. They used to camp out along the river. So he went down there to take his sleeping pills and go ahead and, and kill himself. But he got down there. The first thing that happened was this little kid was going to go into the swampy area and get bitten by a, a rattlesnake. So he saved that kid's life, and in the process, the, uh, the police thought he was going to try to molest the boy, so they got after him for that. Mm. But the next day, he was so full of adrenaline that he went down the road looking for something to do. So he started helping their neighbors along the road. And that gave him something to do and gave him a will to live. He fell in love with one of the, one of the ladies he was helping, and that brought him out of his depression and gave him a new lease on life. There's a tremendous satisfaction when you create a character. It's a creative process. You create the conflict, and you create the characters who are going to deal with that conflict. There's nothing more rewarding 
and to have the feeling of that creativity. Because you know, not only do you create the conflict in the characters, you have to create a way that they solve that conflict. And that creates, that causes your mind to have to work a little bit. So it's a lot of fun, really. And when you finish that, when you put the end on it, it's just a tremendous sense of relief and tremendous sense of accomplishment. When you pick up a book to read it, if you don't, if the first two or three pages don't get you interested, then you probably shouldn't read that book. My books, I like to think, when you pick them up, you don't want to put it down until you finish them, and that's what everybody tells me. And when I read them up, like so I write these things and I don't read them again, but when I pick them up to read them again, I find them just as interested in that book as though I was buying it from somebody off the street. It's tremendously interesting. vacation without ever leaving. Create your own world, I guess. Um, it was actually just an idea with girlfriends one night. We were having some drinks and kind of rehashing all the crazy experiences we've had group, like growing up together. And then it was just like, oh, well, we could turn this into that. And then I just kind of took it and ran with it and ended up with the book story. <laughs> um, overcoming anything is possible. You know, I never thought in a million years I would ever publish a book so <laughs> anything's possible um, Amazon uh, has it Google Play has an ebook uh, KaylaRay.com it's got links to all the purchase places educational instructor book for young children it actually shares them um, how to actually take care of their teeth so actually they start out um, in two flush lanes and they get onto the house of floors and in the end they actually end up cavity city graveyard which what happens is when you don't take care of your teeth yes actually I have um, I actually have my second one that just came out last week called the haunted mouth so yeah so I had two more that are actually in the works as well the best part of being a writer is that you get to put your imagination to use and you get to actually everybody else see what you actually created and enjoy it. I wrote this back in the year 2000. I was actually prepared to give a um, presentation to a group of young girls that were interested in dental hygiene, but I didn't get a chance to actually um, present this, so I actually decided to go ahead and actually turn it into a book, and that's what I did. I sent it to a publishing company. Be sure to check out the book and make sure that um, after reading the book, I hope that it helps to inform you to take much better care of your teeth. I always believe that good old hygiene habits begin at a young age in order to be um, maintained for a lifetime. You can actually be on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, Apple iTunes, Walmart, eBay. So basically um, anywhere at a local bookstore you can find it as well. is called Returning to Eden, with Eden being a paradise. That basically you go back in the Bible and you find out about it. The reason what it does is it basically states that in the about 250 years in the future, we as a species are going to be able to achieve immortality in this existence. And at that time, we are going to be then returning to Eden. Now, where is Eden? Throughout the universe. And so, if you live forever, obviously we're going to occupy the entire universe in that infinite time, which makes for a little bit of a challenge. So what the book does is it brings up the question of how do we prepare for that eventuality? It's not something simple, it's not something straightforward, it's going to take an awful lot of work on our part to be able to get there as a species. The best part about being a writer is you actually get to express yourself and what you actually feel and what you've learned, what you believe. And that made it very nice because as a systems engineer, I got to basically describe what I learned in 50 years of computers. The idea came in a couple of different ways. I was raised as a Lutheran. I was going to be a Lutheran minister as a young man. And so I believed in a God and 
and immortality and going through a certain way. As I age and as I did other work and everything, I came to different realizations. And I realized, yes, humanity has a special relationship with the Creator, but it's not what's been written 2,000 or 3,000 years ago. It's different now than it was then, and it's a matter of we have to then adapt to what is our relationship to the Creator. Oh. My message to the reader is be yourself. And just ask a couple of questions. One, why is there existence? Two, what is our real purpose in existence? And three, how do I fulfill that purpose in this existence? Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or Page Publishing, which was the publisher. Life is about something you, you have to experience it. Okay? That's what it's all about. And uh, not listening to somebody's story or somebody's learning something. No. You have to be there. You have to experience it. What do you feel? What do you... What do you... Emotion, everything, you know? So that... But I, I did not think to write a book about my life. I did not think. But later, after I reached 60 years old, I decided... I, I looked at my life and I have different experiences than most average people. Journalist, I was a, I was photo journalist at first, and uh, and then I became photographer, like a photo, like a traveling photographer. The best part of that writer is about um, you have a, I have a, I discovered myself that I have a, some kind of a secret talent I never realized I can express. My feeling, my emotion, my thinking when in intellectualism, in writing, I discovered it. Um, you said many things I have written in my book. It's not exactly mainstream media, okay? May you, normal people don't talk about, but I express my, my, my the things and in, in my writing. And I'm able to communicate with the leaders. Okay? And also to the public, which not many people experienced what I went through. Okay, that was all about. And uh, it's nothing sensational or anything, but um, you know, life about, let's say, like expansion is about average, maybe you know, maybe 70 years old, 75 years old. Okay, activate. And uh, so those years, 75 years time, what do you have done? Hmm. What do you have learned about your life? And what is your message to the? The, you got your next generations. Uh, this book you can uh, buy on Amazon.com and also Burns Noble. Uh, Mekistan, again, is about uh, an African American band based in Atlanta. They're trying to make it big in the music industry, but uh, they come across a problem when they are asked by a major record label to change their genre of music from softcore to more hardcore music. And there's kind of a split within the group whether they should take the money, change their way of playing, or should they stay in their ground or make a stand and stick to their values and morals and play music they're more uh, comfortable with playing. I would say the best part of being a writer is being able to get with the many readers and fans that I have. Uh, when I have book signings, I love to interact with the readers who like to give me their comments, uh, positive and negative about my books. But uh, I really enjoy that. It gives me a chance to meet a lot of new people. So that's probably my favorite part. The characters in my book, I try not to stereotype them. Uh, they're very real, uh, very believable, and they're not the typical um, characters that you would read in a lot of novels, which I guess some people will consider uh, urban fiction. But uh, I like to say that my characters are very real and very believable. Well, my message to my readers would be to uh, continue reading, continue to be supportive, and for those aspiring uh, authors out there, I say um, don't give up on your dream. Continue to write. Uh, don't be discouraged. And uh, keep the faith and keep on keeping on. Uh, my book, Make a Stand, can be found on Amazon, 
uh, in Barnes and Noble, and if you're in Atlanta, you can find it at my favorite bookstore, Madhu Bookstore. Dragon Blade when I was 17, started writing it in high school, it took 20, 20 years okay. altogether, writing, publishing it um, through Ex Libris, and uh, this second book, Dragon Flute, the sequel, took about two years, and it's just now being released uh, with a different publication. So I was working in my dad's office when I was in, when I was in high school, and I basically discovered I really hated being stuck in an office, like a lot of people. So I came up with this idea of a character that was stuck in a job, but was really a hero, and didn't know he was a hero. So he goes on an adventure. He falls in love. He basically saves the whole universe, and in the sequel they have a child 15 years later, and the story goes on, and it's an uh, action-packed adventure, drama, romance. The best part of being a writer is that people get excited when you tell them they're a writer. I'm also a teacher, so when I talk to students, they get really excited and they want to read my books, and they want to ask if I'm famous, and especially when I, as an English teacher, people respect you when they know that you actually are a published author. Uh, basically, that you can accomplish pretty much just about anything. Um, I had a learning disability growing up, so the fact that with a learning disability, I published a book and became a teacher, that just shows that really people can do just about anything. It's not really what the book is about, it's more that I did it. You can get copies of the book on Amazon, uh, Dragon Blade, and uh, Page Publishing New York. This will be available very soon. 